So the problem we'll be looking at today in regards to mental health is a treatment that potentially could help with depression. And more particularly, we're gonna be discussing tramadol. I've done a video in the past, which I'll put in the link here, showing that tramadol could potentially help and be a treatment for depression. So this is kind of like part two to it, but like and subscribe. Thank you to all the new subscribers that have joined. I greatly appreciate it. I love every one of you. So let's jump into this problem in regards to tramadol potentially being a treatment for depression and possibly approved by the FDA. Let's jump right in. All right, everyone. So I'm just gonna go ahead and cut to the chase. This was a huge miss opportunity in regards to a treatment for depression and why it should be, in my opinion, a treatment for depression. Remember, depression rates are increasing by the numbers, not only in children across the boards, even up until you, sometimes, you know, I wouldn't even have thought this, of, you know, when I was younger, but the elder, they, they become depressed as well. Like we have to look at treatments when it comes to, even if there's side effects, what helps them? What is your quality of life? So I had to kind of say that at first, but let's jump right on into it in regards to the missed opportunity and hopefully them making corrections, the FDA in the near future. So let's jump right on into it. I won't keep you long. So, so once again, as stated, the missed opportunity in my opinion, <clears throat> the problem. So I did a video prior showing that it could be a treatment for uh, depression, which I'll link below, but here's the main problem. So over in regards to tramadol, over 50 citations have shown, and once again, they're peer reviewed, and it is, and this is biomedical literature. And the big thing is this, so they have these, they have the citations, and also, within it a lot of times and even within them the small there are small phase 2a clinical trials that show that it is effective as well and in one particular one in a 2a uh, clinical trial it particularly showed that it that tramadol was at least as effective as aminotriptyline so in my opinion and that in itself that should be, okay, that should, that would be not a red flag. That would be, okay, let's do more studies. Even though, even though, once again, which we'll get to it, I'll tell you why it wasn't approved in a second. And once again, what I mean by approved is the FDA has to approve it. With that being stated, it still can be prescribed off label for depression, but it can be a lot harder to have it something that have it as a treatment that you can consistently get because if it's not FDA approved a lot of times over time if it's not approved there can just be problems with just for getting the medication and being in pharmacies off labeling sometimes not all the time off labeling is to, is legal the only risk you run into is you know what if the uh, what if it get it gets a bad rep? The FDA can even come in and deem and say, "Oh, do not use this," and then it can be taken off the market. So that's that's part of that. But anyway, so once again, not approved meaning FDA. That was a little bit of a rant. But outside of that, so I wanted to do this first. So what my proposed solution to this is, mine is, it should be approved by the FDA as a treatment for depression. Also, in a lot of these studies, which I did not mention. In a lot of these peer-reviewed studies, what was shown was dosing, dosing or dosages between 50 to 200 milligrams was the average dose. Now, somebody who is suffering with pain, which once again, tramadol is approved for pain. So what some of the studies showed was people who, have, who are, who, suffer from depression also sometimes can suffer from chronic pain which is common and their dose right off the bat had to be right around the 150 to 200 milligram dose because they've got to take it throughout the day now if it's just for depression they could do 50 milligrams once a day or twice a day um, but the, for example for somebody who is in physical pain and suffering from depression the average uh, this an example would be 50 milligrams TID meaning 50 mil milligrams three times a day or even 50 milligrams 50 milligrams three times a day as needed could be another one but 
the dosing has shown to be efficient in my opinion a lot there has been it's just been, it's been shown that the minimal side effects there are it doesn't that that shouldn't outweigh someone being able to as from a physician standpoint or a nurse practitioner standpoint it shouldn't make it where we're scared to prescribe it off label because I just think that there was a whole no, whole nother layer into the to the thing. I mean, just just because it's something that's approved off label, it can be depending on the times and whatnot and what what's going on. Sometimes physicians are scared to write it, so that's why things like this, especially with mental health, like needs to be approved by the FDA. I know off label it can be prescribed, but I'm telling you, in my opinion. You should have the right to choose, but if there, there's true studies showing this, and once again, and I'm gonna, oh, and right now I'll just tell you this. The reason why it was not approved, there was a two, there was a 2B trial as well. There, in, in a 2B trial, it was a large 2B trial, which I'm putting below, you'll see right now what, 2B, what a 2B trial is, what it is. So it essentially said the dosing was off, meaning the dosing uh, was not right for the individual and what they wanted was an extended release is what they were wanting to study so they weren't saying that it was that they they're saying the dosing was off but what they're saying is what it one met it one 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 and that's it throughout the day which honestly that ideally would be a great solution extended release in my opinion i that would be great but the problem was in 2016 right here they abandoned it and it's been nowhere since but i but the problem is is why it should be approved by the fda is once it's approved then people can start working on extended release versions and whatnot but i'm telling you with mental health in general we need to be looking at more obviously not just pharmaceutical medications there's a lot of other different types of therapy but when it comes to this we do need to find more uh pharmaceutical solutions to this matter as well because a lot of them the side effects a lot of them people just don't have success with sometimes SSRIs or SNRIs, but like with tramadol, it's an SSRI and it shows SSNRI effects. So it affects both your serotonin and for your norepinephrine is what they think. So didn't mean to go on a spiel, but once again, I think in particular, this is added to this, but I think in particular somebody suffering from chronic pain out there and somebody suffering with major depressive disorder, they've tried lots of meds that don't work, what if they tried Tram at all, had that option, or Ultram, and they do 150 milligrams, 50 milligrams three times a day, and it helps them. It'd be worth it. I, I will say this, if it, if it were to come out, to sh if you can show me horrible side effects and stuff happening, like what it, what, what was the problem, how people didn't respond right to it, what did it lead to? And you can show me potential problems, I would agree, but I can't find that on this. They need, and even if you can, we need more studies to verify that. But once again, that is it. Please like and subscribe. This is your Daily Dose of Mental Health with Adam. I appreciate all of you. We're going to continue to put out a video, a week, at least a video a week, and follow my 365 days of running. I'll put the playlist at the end. I love you all, and once again, have a great rest of the week.